Okay, we've got a gi um, narrated sparring session at Watford Gracie Jiu Jitsu. So, starting in like a kind of a sport setup where knees and um, on the ground already. So, he passes my guard quite easily. I was trying to practice the high low guard where I'm going to take my outer leg, my right leg, and whip it over his head, but he's holding it with his hand. So I trap his leg, his arm, sorry, in between my legs. I was looking for the uh, triangle from the bottom, but you can see he's keeping his head super tight, so it's not going to happen. I'm quite comfortable on the bottom, though. Quite, I don't mind being on the bottom. It gives me a good chance to practice my defenses, my safe hands and whatnot. He steps over for the mount. So I slip my left leg out and I hook underneath his leg. He can't really step off now because as he steps off I just follow him. My toes are like gripping the bottom of his leg. Good sticky feet with all that. And now he's in my butterfly guard. I've got one hand in the collar and he's grabbing my wrist. So kind of like when someone's like this I just take my time, wait and see what they do. Um, uh, closed guard now so I've got my leg my feet wrapped around his body and my feet are interlocked with his closed guard you can see he's trying to grab my wrist so I'm just seeing if I can set something up by him trying to do that I was going to come right over the top and spin for an arm lock but I just felt like the time wasn't right for it um, I tried to sweep him to the left then because I felt his balance was slightly off but I don't think I, I did a very good job of the sweep but I'm going to try a second time now so what I do is I shift my hips out I move my hips out and when he adjusts I'm going to put my left foot on his knee and hit him with the right foot and that will knock him over. There we go. And I get up on top. That's a pendulum sweep. And now I'm pushing his right hand down to the floor hoping he's going to turn towards that hand so I can do the arm block on the other hand. I use that quite a lot now. Now as he gets up, I let him out. I'm going to sweep him back into the mount. Here on Grace, he does this to me all the time when I roll with him. Okay, I'm just seeing if he's going to follow my arm over so I can spin for the arm lock. You see, that time I moved my arm in the air and I just stepped ready for the arm lock, but he didn't quite follow it the same. So now I'm pushing my hand in the collar, fingers in, trying to come underneath for the, for the cross collar choke. He grabs my wrist. Now, again, if someone grabs my wrist like this, I'm just going to take my time. I'm not going to rush it. Um, I'm just waiting to see how he follows my hand and he, can I push it across his body again and spin for the arm. There's going to be a lot of arm locks from what I remember in this role. It's like arm lock heaven. So now I've got the cross collar choke. And he gives up. I think he gave up quite quickly this end. Back into the guard. Looks like he likes to grab the wrists. And this is quite a long roll as well. It's quite a quiet class this session if I remember rightly. And um, so we spend a bit longer, I think it's over 10 minutes as well. So again, just went to see where you can see sweep all to his right. Look, he's on his knee, he's posting up his right leg, his left leg is down, so my right, sorry, he's sweep all to his left. So now we do the same sweep, foot on the hip, foot on the knee, sorry, and then use my other leg to knock him over. Pendulum sweep. It's a great sweep because it's fast, you don't have to get into position for it, you just do it. And as soon as you feel like their weight isn't right, you can hit the sweep. So S mount coming around the corner ready for the arm lock. I want to go under the arm that I want. But again, don't need, no need to rush it. So now look, I'm pushing down his left arm, hoping he turns into it, and if he does that, I'm going to spin for his, his other arm. So I'm pushing his right arm down, so I spin for his left arm. There we go, same move. And I take my right leg off and let him up. This time I let him pass, he steps over for the modified mount and if I really wanted to defend maximum I would turn back to my back to the ground but it's nice to stay here for a little bit to see if you can put yourself a little bit deeper in trouble. I can see him getting ready for the arm lock now so I just I did what I said, turn my back to the ground, that's the safest place to be. In fact I think the worst place to be when someone side mounts on you is facing away from them. I do a sneaky little trap and roll. Now the first thing you want to do when you get into the top of someone's guard is A, take your time, don't rush to pass, and B, before you pass you want to posture. So you want to sit up, 
you would have your knees wide and you would have your hips down on your heels. Now at the moment he's got a hand in the collar so I can't do that, so I play the safe hands. As soon as he lets go it gives me an opportunity I'm going to posture and sit up. But like I said I don't want to just muscle it, I want to wait for him to let go, give me a tiny bit of room and then I sit up. So just take the same old story, just take your time, wait for the opportunity. There we go, and now I sit up. Now hold on to him. Now now it's time to pass. Once you sat up like this, it's a great time to pass, and I think standing is the best way. So you see I use my right knee, push against my right elbow to make a wall to keep his uh, left leg out, and now I go under his leg with the other hand and grab the collar. This is like a around the legs pressure pass. Quite often when I'm in this situation, I hug their leg, and I just put a lot of pressure on his neck and I use my head to block his, his right leg so he can't get over. So he can't force a pass now and he just ends up with a choke. I'm going to shoot my second hand underneath. See I put my uh, left hand in the collar and I shoot the second hand underneath because he can't, he can't see it. My left hand was blocking his field of vision so he couldn't see the second hand shooting underneath. And quite often people put their hands in the wrong place. Uh, Hiran does this to me all the time, shakes my head like this as he shakes his hands in. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start up again. Let him start on top. So look at my right leg, it's blocking his step over now. He's, if he steps over the top, I'm going to hook him with the other leg. And that's my, and then that's how I get out, and that gets me back to the guard. There you go. Once I've hooked him, he can't step back off because my my leg follows him. And as he tries to step off, I lift it as well, which opens up even more space and gives me the guard. Now, once again, look. I just like to just lay there, take your time, let him make the mistake. And if you want to bait them a little bit, you can shift your hips around, see if they follow you, which opens up the sweeps. But you know, there's, they've got to have a reason to follow you. One of the reasons is because if you're shifting your hips to the side, you're getting an angle, you're getting ready for the arm locks. Or uh, if you don't want to go directly for the arm lock, you go for the high guard. So I'm going to try a scissor sweep here, but he looks quite bassy. Yeah, I can't get his weight onto me enough to make it work. So let's see, I've walked my hips out and how he follows. And now I'm going to climb my legs up. Fly my legs are up right on top, so I get one leg over his shoulder. This is called the high guard, or we call it the triple threat position. And uh, from here, I can do stuff like I still do the cross collar choke, but I can also jump for the arm lock so quick. Um, he stacks me to get out of it. But I'm going to go back to that position. I think that's one of the main attacks from the guard, and it's very street as well. You just climb your legs up like that on top of them. Now, once you're up there, the sweep is really good as well. So that now my leg and he has to jump the other side of his head, boom, and we have the arm lock. Super quick. Now if I go for that again and I shift my hips out, I can often sweep into that side. So in the arm lock position here. Again, I'm just waiting to see what happens. I'm either gonna Yes, yeah, so I'm getting back up. If I'm not sure what's happening, I'm gonna start shoving my hand in the collar take his mind off it, he's thinking about the arm locks at the moment. So quite often you take his mind off it by sticking your hand in the collar. Okay, so I'm going to do a switch. Arm lock switch. Again, very uh, similar to the way Hiran does it, it's where I got it from. He does that a lot on me as well. I shouldn't have grabbed my leg here. He grabs my hand. It's a mistake. That was good by him there. He could have almost got his arm out then. That's what I should have done is grab my lapel. I'm grabbing it now. With the hand that's wrapping under his arm, it's much safer to grab a lapel like that because now he can't just pull my arm off. Here and taught this escape in the seminar. There we go. Now his arm's out. His arm straightens and it's, it's over. See, I told you it'd be a lot of straight arm locks. <laughs> Almost got the sweep again. There we go, that same sweep, just blocking his knee with the same side foot that you're sweeping into and then using the other leg to knock him pendulum sweep style. Some people call it flower sweep. Um, and a great way to set that up is where you move your hips. So look, watch me shift my hips. I'm going to shift my hips. Uh, I think I did to the left. Shift my hips to the left. There we go. And when he follows, boom, you hit the sweep. 
exactly the same. It's like using his momentum makes it even worse. So now you just look, he's hiding the endangered arms, so and now I'm going to switch to the other side and take the arm lock. Yeah. If you can switch, if you, if you, when you're up in that S mount, if you can take the arm lock on either side, um, your arm locks will be three, four times as good as they are just being there to go for the same side that you, you originally spun for. Being able to switch is, is very useful. Now, you wouldn't do that in a street fight, it's too risky. This is kind of like playfulness, don't really care about the outcome. In a street fight, it's completely different. You've got to it's just control, get them out, control them for as long as possible. We have a class specifically for that where we just do that style. We call it reflex development. This is kind of a little bit more sharpening sword, be a bit more playful, um, practice more extravagant techniques. So I'm going to do a triangle jump then. And you can see his hands open. I was thinking about coming over for the Kimura or bringing my knee through for the triangle. So you see me moving my hips out, and that's, this is the full pendulum sweep now, without the uh, same side leg on the knee. You just throw both legs. Again, same thing here, just push his opposite hand down, he turns, and I take the near side arm. So now my legs got stuck under his armpit, the one that's over his head. That's not bad, it's quite good for control, um, but it's not good for switching. I can't switch now to the other arm, because my leg gets stuck. Not quite as easy anyway. Um, so I want to get that leg out now if I'm going to switch. So I think I move back to the side mount. There you go, back to like a knee on stomach. And I'm gonna switch the arm bar again. There we go. And now I put my south leg across his body and now look, both my legs are out, now I can switch. So look, there you go, the hand, the hand that he thinks I'm taking, he's covering. And I switch to the other side. So let me stick my hand in the collar now. This is just a distraction. This just takes his mind off the arm lock for a second. I'm either going to take the near side arm or the far side arm. It's a little sneaky Americana that you can turn into an arm lock as well. Straight arm lock. There we go, and there's the switch. Yeah. To get there, I just need to press it over and over. Good job, Bill. Yeah.